This is Matthew Matt with a video about the Koku or the Pythagorean Theorem. This is a follow-up to the Desmos activity you did. You can see the link there and I'll put the link in the um, comments of the YouTube or in the description of the YouTube video. And I just briefly want to say a word or two about the history of mathematics. So you all probably learned about this theorem as the Pythagorean Theorem in school. Uh, there's some controversy or unclear evidence about whether Pythagoras ever actually proved this theorem. And we do have a lot of evidence that the properties of right triangles were known around the world and that there are proofs that predated him. One of the problems with the history of math is that we often either don't learn any history of math, so math sounds like it just it seems like it just exists out in the universe, um, or we only learn about the European, or we primarily learn about the European contributions to mathematics, and we therefore ignore the rich mathematical history of different cultures and people all over the world. Uh, so let's talk about this theorem and what it's actually saying. We've got a right triangle here, and this short leg I'm going to say is A units long, or has a length of A. This right leg has a length of B, or this longer leg, and then the hypotenuse, which is the side across from the right angle, has a length of C. And many of you probably learned in school that in this situation we can say C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now in my experience, a lot of people think of this as a statement about how long the sides are, and we usually use the theorem for that purpose. We might have um, a triangle and we're trying to find the length of one of the sides that we don't know. We know two of them, we're trying to find the other one. And that's one of its main applications. But the theorem itself is actually a statement about area. So I can build squares off of each side if I want. Uh, these two red squares off the legs and this blue square off the hypotenuse. And what this theorem is saying is that the area of these two red squares, which are a squared and b squared together, is the same as the area of this blue square, which is c squared. That's what the theorem is really saying. These two smaller squares have the same total area as this one larger square off the hypotenuse. So let's talk a little bit about why that might be true, how we can prove or justify that that might be true. And there's lots of different proofs. We're just going to work through one. So we're going to start with this uh, square coming off the hypotenuse, and we're going to think of it as a puzzle that we can fill in. We're going to fill it in with copies of our triangle. So I'm going to make a copy of our triangle, and I'm going to slide it into position. I'm going to make a second copy, and I'm going to turn it and slide it into position here. A third copy will go along the bottom. And then finally, my fourth copy, which I already have sitting right there, I am going to rotate into position like that. Sorry, let me rotate a little more slowly into position like that. Uh, so now I have this puzzle, it's made up of these four triangles, and then there's this extra square in the middle. I'm also going to make a second copy of this triangle, and uh, this puzzle, and I'm going to think about how I can rearrange the pieces. So I can slide this piece over here, and I can slide that piece down to the bottom. And now I've got, an, I've got the same overall area, right? It's the same four triangles and that square, and none of them are overlapping in a weird way. So I haven't added or subtracted any area, so the two puzzles have the same area. We want to think about how can we find out the area of this puzzle on the right. So if you recall, the short leg of our triangle has length A, and therefore I can think of this little chunk over here as a square with area A squared. The longer leg of our triangle has length of B, and I can therefore think of this section as a square with area of B squared. So the area of the puzzle on the right is a squared plus b squared. But as a reminder, the puzzles are made of the same pieces, and, they're not, and they have the same overall area. So we get the formula that um, you all learned in school, which is that c squared is the same as a squared plus b squared. They're just two different ways of saying the same amount of area. So to summarize, the two puzzles are made out of the same five pieces. Therefore, they have to have the same area. The left puzzle's area can be expressed as c squared. The right puzzle's area can be expressed as a squared plus b squared. And therefore, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is the theorem that we all learned in school. Again, these are just two different ways of saying the same thing or of counting the same amount of area.